This is Jerry Mallory Field, Bulldog Stadium, Needleland, Texas. Tonight on the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience, the Viter Pirates are coming to town to play the Needleland Bulldogs. I'm Charlie Jellin for Sheffield Productions, alongside James Ware of KFDM Fox 4 Sports. It's good to see you again, James. Good to see you, Charlie. Good to be back in the booth with you. We've got a great game going on tonight. The opening game of 24A district play. Needland hasn't lost in two years. No, not a district game. It dates back to October 15th of last year. These teams are also the two offensive leaders so far in this season. They both bring in a 2-1 and one, uh, district record. But uh, the different, uh, you know, as far as the points that have been scored so far, Viders got 111 uh, and have given up 65 points, whereas Needland, you can see they scored 93 and gave up 84. But when you look at the rushing leaders, Sage Smith, provider, is the leader of the entire district, 614 yards in three games. Yeah, not to mention he's got a little backup freshman too, Halen Lekelt. Lekelt is how we're going to say his name. Lekelt. Lekelt, he is a freshman. We've heard it a couple different ways. But the last two games, 144 yards for the freshman, Charlie. Kendrick Hopkins for the Bulldogs has been leading them for the last two years. Hopkins uh, had an average there of 6.7. He's only scored five touchdowns, but those 525 yards have been gained in three hard games uh, against Crosby, uh, Goose Creek, Memorial, and Angleton, whereas uh, Smith was able to get some of his yardage against a smaller school, Bridge City, a 3A school that uh, Vider beat rather handily. The Bulldogs pass and rush fairly balanced. Vider, as you can see, is primarily a, a rushing team. Look at that, 1,201 yards, again, three games. Right, 145 yards passing, and that's that slot T we're going to talk about a lot tonight. I mean, they are going to force you to stop that run, and they're going to run until they set that pass up, and that's when they'll burn you, just when you think they're not going to throw the football, they're going to throw the football. The two not leading, very often, though. The two leading offenses in 24A coming into this game. Quarterback matchup there, Geth Simmons for the Pirates. He has not thrown often, but when he does, he's fairly effective. Two, had two interceptions last week in their uh, loss against a 5A school. They played Friendswood uh, Clearbrook. And Vider coach uh, Jeff Matthews thought he was actually going to win that game. Kind of lost it there in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, you don't want to talk to the Vider Pirate fans about that. They <laughs> think they were cheated out of that game. But, uh, hey, uh, a loss is a loss, and they've had to sit on that loss now for two weeks with a bye going into uh, last week. So it's hard. And, Coach, uh, I even read a quote from him. Uh, when you lose, you can't wait to get back on the field. That's what Jeff Matthews had to say, and his team has had to wait two weeks to get back on. Last year, the Pirates were able to make it two years in a row into the playoffs, first time in school history. And Needlin, what can you say about Larry Newman that has not been said before? His 21st season yeah. made it into the Division I Regional, uh, beat uh, Pearland Dawson along the way, uh, probably the biggest upset in Coach Newman's career. Yeah, This is the two longest-running coaches in the district. Like you said, Coach Newman going into his – He's finished 20, 21 season. Jeff Matthews in his 15th season with the Vider Pirates. Last week, uh, Needland defeated Angleton here, or two weeks ago, I should say. Both teams had last week as a bye week. That's kind of a tradition in 24A here. Most of the teams take that week off. Our weather, uh, it's it was sunny. It was a beautiful day here at Bulldog Stadium. But now the temperatures dip down into the high 70s. That humidity is getting ready for some rain. I know Dana Malasson was talking about that this morning over on your, your station, KFDM. Yeah, slight chance tomorrow. I think 30% on Saturday, but uh, 60 on Sunday is what he was saying. So, yeah, good chance of rain on Sunday. But not tonight. We're going to see some good football weather. Here's the Nederland Bulldogs get ready to receive the opening kickoff. Charlie, did you worry about the Nederland Bulldogs when they opened up that season against Crosby, the 56-35 loss as a team that was picked to win this district? I thought track season ended back in May. You know, watching Crosby go up and down the field, Needland trying to stay with them. Kick all the way to the goal line, taken there by Osmar Mendoza. Mendoza steps out of the first tackle and is taken down at the 17-yard line. The Pirates are all over. And Pirates have an excellent defense, the second best in the district so far. And Needland's defense last year led them to that undefeated district uh, season, the, probably the best defense Needland had ever had last year. Right. Not too shabby this year. Like you said, two straight years with undefeated district records. October 15th of 2010, the last time they lost, that was to the Central Jaguars. Not a friendly uh, 
rivalry there. <laughs> Jeff Matthews. Can't wait to play that one this year. Jeff Matthews has never won in Bulldog Stadium. Interesting this, stat. This is going to be interesting. Kendrick Hopkins, the tailback. Preston White, the quarterback. From the I formation. Toss over to Hopkins. Cuts it upfield. Loses the ball. Oh, that looks it like It's being Vider fought Pirates. for. Looks like Vider has recovered. So the first play recovered by the, the Pirates at the 19-yard line. Wow. How is that? You start your offense off in the red zone inside the 20-yard line for the Vider Pirates. That's a ball recovered by Alex Butte, the free safety, I believe, number 22. And you can see Hopkins training hard Butte hit there right on the there. ball. And it squirts off to the sideline there. And Butte is able to pick it up and actually gain a few yards before he falls down. Pirates hoping to take quick advantage here. And there is that slot T. Now we'll get to test that Nederland defense. Sage Smith, number 31. Handoff goes to Jeremy Stevenson, number four. Carry, number four Stevenson. Gets it down to the 15-yard line. Five-yard line. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong down marker. You're right, Charlie. I thought they were starting inside. The play. Brings up a second Stevenson down. coming over from that wing back position. You can imagine that uh, the Bulldog defense is going to key on stopping number 31, Sage Smith. Motion this time, hand off to the fullback, and he pushes forward, gets to that five-yard line, first to five goal. Smith. You were you were just seeing the future the there, James. Eight, first down and goal from the Good six. Pirate first down. The offensive push of that big pirate offensive line. A lot of Smith motion, a lot close. of slants you'll see in this T uh, slot T offense they run. They're going to try to trick you. Simmons with a keeper. Looked like he was going to fake it over to uh, Smith. Number three, Geth Simmons, the quarterback. It's inside the five, marked at the four, second and goal. Ball carrier Simmons. You're going to see this from the Vider Pirates, just good hard-nosed football. This is like they played in the old days. Taking advantage, trying to take advantage of the opening play fumble by Kendrick Hopkins. Keeper again, Simmons. Tackled from behind. Leon Mayfield coming in from his linebacker That's slot for the Leon Bulldogs. Mayfield, Tackled Simmons, who's actually a small loss on the play. The See the Bulldogs stringing out the play, and Simmons never was able to square his shoulders up. Here's a great field camera shot right down the line of scrimmage. Both Coach Newman and Coach Matthews have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. You know, they're very, uh, they've seen each other so many times, but also they, they play good, clean football here, both schools. Big defensive stand coming up here for the Nederland Bulldogs. Simmons reverses out, pushes inside to the three yard line. Looked like he was thinking about a pitch to Alex Butte, who was lined up as a wing back on that side. He ended up keeping it, it is fourth and goal. Fourth and goal. Looks like they're going to send the field goal unit on. Won't be too bad of a stand if the Nederland Bulldogs hold them to a field goal here. Certainly didn't want to give up a touchdown and go in that quick. Michael Tamayo for Vider. Set to kick from the hold of quarterback Geth Simmons. Kick is up. It's good. Vider breaks on top. Three to nothing with 8.40 left in the first quarter. IBEW. Fun trivia questions coming up there for a second. We would like to acknowledge the corporate sponsors of the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience. DuPont Goodrich Federal Credit Union. 
Lamar University in Beaumont, the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, Lamar State College of Port Arthur, the Museum of the Gulf Coast, Community Bank of Texas, Market Basket, Motiva Enterprises, Five Point Credit Union, Robert Giblin, Mike Fulgence at United Coin and Bullion. All of these longtime sponsors of the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience. Going into the 18th year, James. 18 years for Friday Night Experience. Just about the time I was coming into TV. So we've seen this before. Ryder kicking off from the left-hand side. Tamayo putting it up on the tee there at the 40-yard line. Needlin hoping to get an offensive series going after spotting the Pirates a quick three-point lead. Tamayo's got a leg on him. He put it to the goal line on this opening kickoff. Let's see if he can do that again. Taken over there again by Osmar Mendoza. Tripped up at the 27-yard line, first and 10 there for the Bulldogs. Well, I'll guarantee you on this next possession, Hopkins' number one goal is to hold on to that football. You Knowing the way Coach Newman thinks he's going to get on that horse quickly, I would not be surprised if Hopkins gets the ball on this very first play. Kendrick Hopkins carried the Bulldogs well into the playoffs last year, a senior-oriented team last year. Matter of fact, both of these squads. Motion into a wing. There's Hopkins right up the middle, tackled at the 36-yard line. Tackle made by Bradley Hartman for the Bradley Pirates. Excuse me, 31-yard line. Gain of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Brings up a second down and seven. Last year, the uh, senior-dominated Vider Pirate team had a particularly outstanding player, Montana Carante. Yeah, life without Montana. You don't see many quarterbacks that went both ways the entire game, offense and defense. Middle linebacker, quarterback for the Pirates, their leading rusher, leading tackler. Their pass out to Marcus Barton. Barton gets the first down, tackled at the 49-yard line. Great play action fake by Preston White set up that pass. Drop it right over that defender. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 49 yard line. Offset eye formation. Preston White checks the sideline to see if the coach wants an audible. Motion. Hopkins follows the little trap play up the middle. There's a flag on the play. Three-yard gain. Offensive holding will be the call. Back needling up. Holding against the Bulldogs. First penalty of the game against Needling. They've actually been fairly penalty-free. Throughout the course of their three games, uh, five penalties in the first game against Crosby, four against Goose Creek Memorial, and three against Angleton. So I, I like coaches would like the way that's descending. Absolutely. But one here tonight, that's going to back them up five yards. Looks like they're going to get ten yards out of that. Ten yards on the holding, but it does go back to first down. Needland with that balanced offense has the ability to strike deep. Colton Kimler is the prime receiver. Number nine, he's set up at the near side of the field. He's the one Preston White's looking at right now. Everybody's looking to the sideline to see if the coach is one audible. Here's the pitch to Hopkins, breaks it inside. Puts down his head, meets the safety head on. About to the original first and 10. So it looks like they're going to have about 10 yards to go for second and 10. Good for a gain of nine. Good downfield blocking by the Bulldog offensive line. Three Pirates make the tackle. You can see right here up the alley. Kelly Thomas. 
on that stop for the Pirates. Now they go to the spread formation. Hopkins is the halfback to the left of Preston White. They pull Marcus Martin in as well. And the left tackle jumps. That'll be a fun, another five-yard penalty, so we're already up to two yellow flags. Procedure against the Bulldogs. Yeah, you're not going to move the ball forward with penalties like that. You're constantly working against yourself. Again, 3-0, the Vider Pirates leading with 6.40 left in the first quarter. Colton Kemmler right there in front of the camera. Hopkins with the ball, breaks into the secondary. Ball carrier Hopkins. Taken down by the linebacker after about a four yard gain. Back by number seven. It's gonna be third down and a long 13 for the Bulldogs. Brings up a third down and 13 for the Bulldogs. Ball spotted at the needle and 46 yard line. White and Kimler come in. White taking the play to the huddle. Kimmler goes to his position as split end on the left-hand side. White looks downfield, has a man deep. Caught, save, save. Brings it in at the 28-yard line. Flag on the play, though. There's a flag here on the needle and sideline, right at the 41-yard line. Say's catch would be good enough for a first down. Paul is holding against the defense. I'm sure they will refuse that. Sage Say was listed in Texas football as athlete. No, just wherever you want to put him. He's, he actually uh, goes both ways. He plays safety and wide receiver. Number 10 also made a crucial play in the victory over Angleton, picking up a fumble and returning it, leading up to the last Bulldog touchdown. Good shot of Coach Larry Newman. In one of his calmer moments. Yeah, I'm sure that wasn't his face on the opening fumble on the first oh, play from scrimmage. Good thing the camera was not close. Pro formation now, Kimler on the left-hand side. Pitch to Hopkins. Hopkins sees an alley. Yeah, nice hold. Gets to the 20 Ball yard line. 24, Kendrick Hopkins. Tackled by number 31. Some credit to those big guys. Jacob Brinkley again, number 66, they're pulling and again, puts on a nice play. block. Brings up a second and two for the Bulldogs. Eight yards on first down is an offensive coordinator's dream. Second down and short, and of course, with the play action pass book that the Bulldogs have. Anything could happen here. Say comes out to the left to join Kimler. They have twins over here. Marcus Barton running hard. Gets down to the 10-yard line. 10-yard gain for the fullback. Tackle by number 10, Brad Hall. Carry is good for a Bulldog. First Ball down. is spotted right at the 10. Just that, well, referee's waving the yardsticks back. It's first and goal. The ball is actually touching the 10 yard line. Josh Clayton, the provider, getting in on the tackle there, saving the touchdown. Bulldogs line up, offset eye again. Hopkins, they're working that right side. Hopkins gets down to the five yard Ball line. Number 24, Kendrick Hopkins. Marcus Barton makes a good block there on the defensive end. Linebacker finally comes in to help make the play. Second and goal from the five. Now, a few minutes earlier, Vider had trouble punching it in from here. The Bulldog defense stiffened up. Hopkins hit in the backfield. 
Gets out to the three-yard line. The way the Pirates were penetrating, James, I thought they might get him deep and cause the loss. Shooting the gaps right there. Especially yeah, submarine, yeah, submarine the poor center. I feel for the center when that happens. Hadn't backed him up though. Nederland keeps pushing that ball forward. They haven't had any loss of yardage. Marcus Barton and Sage Say come out. They go to the heavy backfield. Deshaun Washington at <laughs> tight end. And Caleb Malvo. Something tells me he's gonna lead the way, but no. Passes just off the hands of Colton Kimbler. Pass intended for number nine. Taking Austin advantage Alvis of that play action. Lead. Austin Alvis, the defender there. Brings up fourth down for the Bulldogs. I don't see the kicking team coming out either. Preston White was under very Bulldog quick pressure there. You can see him kind of goal. have to short arm the ball as he was hit right at the waist. As he was letting it go. All right, fourth and goal, and the Nederland fans are on their feet. Coach Larry Newman lining up as if he's going to go for it. Hand off to Hopkins. Fighting, fighting. Oh, it's going to be close. Ryder holds. Ryder like holds, short. but it's at their one yard line. Maybe not a bad move. I mean, like you said, they're backed up to the, it, it looks like less than a yard. Hopkins was following about uh, 600 pounds of beef there between tight end Deshaun Washington and halfback Caleb Malvo. A couple of defensive tackles, numbers five and six, called in to push the pile forward. And you can see the back end of that ball is inches from the goal line. Yeah. So the Pirates hold. I like the move. Nederland's running the football and moving it forward. and. Uh, I like the gutsy call. Quarterback sneak by Simmons. Simmons Bob pushes Gary. it forward a yard. Second Not down and nine. Watch this Nederland defense here. They're all pushing the pocket. They know Ryder's going to run the football from there. Ryder, a predominantly running team, almost 90% of their yardage gained on the ground in the first three games. Hand off to Smith. Looks like he's tackled at about the three yard line. Make it the four. Tackled by step about third and six. Sage Smith, number 31, lines up there as fullback. Takes the ball off left tackle. Pirates are facing a third down. Third down and a long six, call it seven. Quick first quarter here with both teams staying mostly to the ground. One of the neat things about that tee, it's hard to tell who ended up with the ball, all that motion there. A lot of motion. But the Smith referees mark there. it at the five yard line. Fourth down, five to go for the Pirates. So the Bulldog defense does Bulldog what is expected of them. Pirates. There's big Deshaun Washington, number six, committed to Texas A&M already, verbal commitment. We'll take a commercial break and be back for this fourth down no in just a minute. Union. My fortune, I earned it the old fashioned way, with long hours and hard work, and now I'm debt free. You're debt free because Five Point paid off our loan. Precisely, my dear. Go mow the yard. Five Point is paying off three loans, plus you can get up to a 2% rate discount. Five Point Credit Union, money for loans right here at home. Your chariot awaits. Thank you. The Museum of the Gulf Coast, where our area collection of the Jurassic period meets Janis Joplin with 60-plus Music Hall of Fame musicians, head coach Jimmy Johnson, Bum and Wade Phillips with 60-plus sports legends, and more than 35 notable people. 
discover the arrival of early man to our area and the Civil War in the Gulf Coast region. Learn the stories behind this and so much more open seven days a week. Museum of the Gulf Coast, a museum like no other. What's unique is the people who purchased them. And when picking one, every detail counts, right down to the stitching on the seats. So why should picking a car loan be any different? Whether it's a low rate or a low payment you're looking for, at Do Good we customize loans to fit your needs. And we'll make sure your lending experience is everything you want it to be. Easy, convenient, and hassle-free. At Do Good, you'll love your car loan as much as you love your car. And that's just one more way they do good. As the teams lined up to punt, Neelan was called for an illegal substitution, made it fourth down and very short from the 10-yard line. They are in punt formation. Butter goes ahead and kicks it away, kicking it away from Osmar Mendoza. Number 80 picks it up, breaks one tackle, gets back to the 45-yard line of the Pirates. Very risky move. Down to the Viter 45-yard line. Osmar Mendoza, a senior for the Bulldogs. Also returns the kickoffs. And we've seen that even in the pros where they misjudge that bouncing ball. And, you know, it's like when you start off in seventh grade, you tell the guys the ball is shaped funny and it bounces funny too. You really can't predict where it's going to go sometimes. 56 seconds left in the first quarter, three to nothing to score as the Pirates took advantage of a Hopkins fumble on the first play that the Bulldogs ran. Needham was able to stiffen the defense inside right close to their goal line and only give up the three points. But here after the punt, first down and 10 at the Viter 45. Hopkins. No gain on the play as Viter is able to swarm him. He's trying to go over the left guard and several linebackers came in to meet him there. Good push by the defense right there, I believe number seven, Blake Rowe, one of the instrumental ones to kick out Hopkins' legs. And that's one thing that Angleton did to Hopkins. They kept hitting him at the knees and he actually had a, a shin injury. He had to come out of the game, the last part of that game. Pro formation, second down and 11. Flag on the play. Hopkins is tripped up as he crosses the 45. Let's see what the flag is for. Selly Thomas is a flag tackle in the backfield. Tripping him up. Referees get together for their confab. Offsides against the defense. That's a free five yards that Coach Newman will take. Yeah, just got a helmet across. A little bit of anticipation there. Second and 11. This will be it for the first quarter as quarterback uh, Preston White's on the sideline talking to the Bulldogs. First quarter will end here with the score three to nothing. Biter over Needlelip. We'll be back in a moment. Lamar University is the contact that you have with the professors here. They're always willing to help with anything that you need. Living in Cardinal Village, I've made great friends. We've been able to study together and have fun all at the same time. The diversity at Lamar University really surprised me. I made so many different friends from all over the world. When I graduate from Lamar University, I know I'll be prepared for my chemical engineering career. Our engineering program is one of the best in the state. Texas Roots, infinite possibilities. Lamar at the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, our commitment to providing high quality medical care includes offering the most modern technology available. A state of the art emergency room, a dedicated heart center, surgical suites with the latest in digital technology, a 64 slice CT scanner, the first hospital with such a unit in Southeast Texas, and an obstetrics unit with neonatal intensive care for high risk babies. It means maintaining a medical staff composed of skilled board certified physicians in a number of medical specialties, backed by experienced nurses, medical technicians, and support staff. Together, we strive to make your experience as pleasant, convenient, and comfortable as possible with all private rooms, thoughtfully appointed birthing suites, 
and innovations in the ER to minimize your wait time. Voted Best Hospital for 2012 by the Port Arthur News Readers and 5-star rated by health grades in key procedures. At the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, we're dedicated to helping you get well, get healthy, and get your life back to normal as quickly as possible. First, down. First play of the second quarter, Preston White throws to Colton Kimler for about 22 yards there. And uh, just the fourth pass play of the game. That first quarter flew by with a bunch of running. Great little route there by Kimler. First down for the Bulldogs at the 23 yard line. Back to the spread formation go the Bulldogs. Brandon Dial in motion. Marcus Barton with the ball, and he's knocked Martin sideways by, by the by tackler who just happens to be Sage Smith. Smith. Next time I'll take the base part, you can have the treble. <laughs> Watch that line form tackle there nice by the two-way starter. Brings up he a pops up like I've done that before. Bulldogs. Many, many times. Myra's 23-yard line. Smith uh, going in the strong tradition there of Montana Carante, playing both ways. Second down and 10, no gain. Bulldogs in the pure shotgun with two halfbacks now. White, quarterback draw. Gets to the 19-yard line. Preston White on the For a flag. That was a late hit. Number 30, Steven Nemsinski. Preston White letting the officials know it. Gain of four, it's gonna be second down and six yards to go. Third down and six for the Bulldogs. third down and six. Bulldogs have been close, but have not been able to get any points on the board yet. Offensively, though, they have maintained the pace in this game. High formation now. White again drops back. Touchdown in the end zone, caught by Sage Say. Yards out. Number 10, the athlete of the Bulldogs. Nice placed as well. White put it just over the head of the defender. The Bulldogs take the lead six to three. Watch the replay. Sage, Sage, Sage does a great job going up to get it too. Right over his head. Cornerback Brett Hall kind of gets turned. Doesn't realize where the ball is. Tanner Oil's point after is good. Bulldogs seven, Pirates three with 10.03 left in the second quarter. We'll be back. Crazy idea. What if your bank actually paid you for using your debit card? Let's say 10 cents. For every $10 or more debit card purchase. How amazing would that be? We call it Cash Back Counts Checking from Community Bank, a free debit card that pays you to use it. Even he's smiling at that. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas, bank where you live. I'm thinking about diversifying with gold, but don't know how? Hi, I'm Mike Fulgens, president of Universal Coin and Bullion. As an award-winning nationwide dealer, we help clients get the answers they need to discover the beauty, security, and strength of gold in their portfolio. Call us today at 866-UCB-GUIDE to receive our award-winning gold guide free. That's 866-822-4843. Bulldog 7, Pirates 3 as we come back to live action here in the second quarter. Tanner Noel ready to kick off. This young man has got a very good leg. He attempted a 45-yard field goal in the game against Angleton. Came just a little bit short. That was a, one of those strange nights where it was hard to judge the field condition. Kick is three yards deep, taken by the Pirates. 
Brought out to the 21-yard line. Jeremy Stevens on the return, tackled by number Jeremy four. Stevenson with the ball. Number Never four rolled. took it and brought it out to the 21, 24-yard return. Vider will have a first down and 10. Early first quarter scores, Central 7, Ozan. Of course, Nederland threatened to score in that first PNG drive and went for it on a fourth down, didn't get in, but happy to have seven points on the board now. Slot T formation, Ryder in its normal offense. Hand off to Stevenson. Still on his feet. Good strong running there gets him across the 25 to the 27. Carrier, Stevenson. Trey Richardson finally brings him down. Six yard gain before the cornerback comes up. Pick up a six on the Those offensive linemen got away with an early one that time. Right here. Just, he, he anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Ball's on the ground. You can see Geth Simmons reaching forward. I don't think the ball ever came to him. He was able to recover the fumble and actually gain a yard. And Simmons talks to his center, Gage Baker. Of course, you know, that's the whole thing about that rushing offense. Those linemen, they're moving forward. Quarterback needs to ride the center forward to get that ball into his hands. Opening up district play tonight, Vider Pirates. Here are the Bulldogs. Seven to three. Big third down and four coming up for the Pirates. Third and three for the Pirates. Here's your freshman, Halen Leckill. Depends on where the spot is. The referee's coming in from the side, say he got to the 30 yard line. Deshaun Washington, number six, finally got his arms around him. And that was the end of that run. He wasn't going forward after Deshaun got him. See the wing back coming around here. Fourth and one for the Pirates. Fourth down and short. The Pirates again in punt formation. Looks like Colton Kimbler is back to return this punt. Jeff Matthews pacing the sideline. He wanted that first down. Kimmler backs Make away from ball. it and it takes a good biter bounce. Dead at the 26 yard line. Bulldogs will have a first down and 10, 728 left in the first half. Go to five point credit union for a qualified we'll be back. months of September, October, in November, and you may never make a loan payment. That's right. One lucky member each month will get their brand. My fortune? I earned it the old-fashioned way, with long hours and hard work, and now I'm debt-free. You're debt-free because Five Point paid off our loan. Precisely, my dear. Go mow the yard. Five Point is paying off three loans, plus you can get up to a 2% rate discount. Five Point Credit Union. Money for loans right here at home. Your cherry. Interception on the first play of Needleland. They were trying a little quick screen pass over there, and the interception is made by Steven Nizemski. He is the rover back for the Pirates. Nimzimski brings nice down the pass from Preston 30, White. That Nizimski. is the first interception, second turnover of the Bulldogs. Ball's at the 19-yard line. Pirates take over Good at field the Bulldogs. position. They start inside the red line. zone. Good job by our camera crew there picking that up. Ryder again trying to take advantage. Oh. There's that early anticipation. Right guard came across line. just a little too early. So that's two offensive series for Needland where on the very first play, they turn the ball over to the Pirates. 
And this one is just as deep in their end of the field as the first one. Pirates definitely need to take advantage of this if they're going to make a game of this. 7-3 the score, Needleland marched the ball methodically down the field, scoring on a 20-yard pass for Preston White to Sage Say. Now Jeremy Stevenson tackled from behind. A little bit of a mix-up it looked like in the backfield. Deshaun Washington, the big guy, getting him in the backfield. Timeout, I believe, is being called by Vider, and indeed they are. Deshaun grabbed Stevenson, and that was pretty much it. We're going to take a commercial break during this timeout. When we come back, we'll see what Vider can do with a second down and 20 to go. about Lamar University is that even though it is smaller, I realized just how big the pool of possibilities were. Finding that out, I dove right in. What surprised me the most about Lamar University is the support and encouragement that I received from faculty and staff. They always challenged me to push myself further. At Lamar University, nothing is out of reach. I've done everything from cleaning up local beaches to studying on beaches in Belize. Texas Roots, infinite possibilities. Lamar University. Jeff Matthews came out onto the field during that timeout. What point was he making? Well, uh, he, he clearly the saw a horse, horse collar the tackle there the in the backfield. The uh, no flags, flags were thrown. And he's going to let the officials know he missed the call. Second down and 10 for Vider after a five-yard penalty and then a five-yard loss. Lakelk in motion, Simmons drops back. He's got a man open in the corner. Intercepted in the end zone. Trey Richardson, number 18. Brings the ball back to the eight yard line as Richardson jumped in the air. And took it away from the Vider receiver. When you don't throw very often, you're not gonna be very sharp and uh, it's gonna come back and bite you right here. Bulldogs Simmons throwing deep in the corner there, and you can see. Just lofted it up. Trying to get it to Jeremy Stevenson, number four, and Stevens, Richardson rather was able to time his leap. So the exchange of turnovers. Leaves the Bulldogs at the six-yard line. 6.54 left in the first half. Needling ahead, seven to three. Hopkins, the lone setback. No, Marcus Barton is back there too. Barton blocks for Hopkins, and Hopkins is hit by the from the backside pursuit. Hopkins. There is almost like the guys on the defensive right were slanting to their left. Barton went through to block a linebacker, and Hopkins met a defensive Stop tackle. Vider yeah. defense doing a good job of plugging those holes. Nowhere for Hopkins to go. He just leaves a shoe on the field. Yeah, I was fixing to say you saw the shoe there. Must have all your equipment. Colton Kimler and Preston White bring the play to the offense. No gain on the play, second down. Charlie, you used to play when you used to fold your hat up and put it in your pocket, huh, your helmet? Uh, well, no, that was my dad. Oh, okay. A throwback, this. several men open. Flag on the play as Kimmler was trying to come back for the underthrown ball. Hand off to Hopkins. Hopkins threw it back to Preston White. A gutsy call from your own six yard line. Yeah, Lee Flicker flicks it back into the end zone. We'll see what the referees make the call. Is it offensive or defensive interference? Kimmler was deeper, but the Defender was between the ball and Kimmler. Pass interference Pass called interference against the defense. Against the that would give the Bulldogs a first down. Fans, the Friday night experience can be viewed anytime on the KFDM Channel 6 website at kfdm.com. 
Just click on the Sports tab and then the Friday Night Experience page. This is presented by J.K. Chevrolet at the airport and Fultz Chiropractic, Jared's Paint and Body, Larry's French Market, Ritter Lumber, Sports Connection, and Texas Coastal Community Credit Union. Proudly supporting high school football in Southeast Texas. Ten yard penalty from the original spot makes it a first down and 10 for the Bulldogs at their 21. White rolls out. Kimler, a beautiful shake pattern. Pass complete from Close to the Kimler. first down, he's gonna be right at it. Nederland throwing a lot more now in this second quarter. Trying to loosen up that defensive line of Vider that's been shutting the Hopkins down. Good for a Bulldog first down. Ball is spotted at the 32 and that is a first down for Nederland. Pro formation. Marcus Martin up the middle, and he's got some breakaway speed. Marcus Martin, the junior running back. Three Pirates had the angle on him, and Martin gets it down to the 11-yard line. What a 53-yard run. Martin taking advantage of the focus on Hopkins. Hit right up the middle in the seam, and now... Wasting no time, going right to work. Ball is spotted, and there they go. Bulldogs are ready, but there's lots of offensive movement, and they're going to be five yards further there back. There's a flag on the play. Needland trying to take advantage of that and catch Vider when they weren't looking, and... They shot themselves in the foot. Procedure against the Bulldogs. Fine run there by Marcus Barton. The Pirates secondary had the angle on him, though. Brought him down at the 11. Big Ned. First down and 15 after that five yard penalty. Bulldogs can actually get a first down at the one yard line. Here's the pop up to Kimler, touchdown. Beautiful play to the corner of the end zone. Colton Kimbler, 16-yard touchdown pass from Preston White. White's second touchdown pass of the first half. White to Kimbler. Defender's got to be turned around. Tanner Noel set for the point after here. A great ground field. You can see it just right over the head of the defensive back, Brett Hall. White certainly placing those in a great position for Kimmler. The wheels kick is good. Bulldogs are now ahead 14 to three. Opening game of 24A district play, 2013. With the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, the Port Arthur News Friday night experience. Charlie Jellin along with James Ware of KFDM Fox 4 Television. We're definitely seeing a Donnie Brook here. As, again, these two teams have a lot to prove. Jeff Matthews, a fighter, has never won at Bulldog Stadium. The Bulldogs have run the table the last two years in a row. Yeah, this is a district you certainly don't want to start out in the hole in. So 1-0, uh, and certainly much better than 0-1 in this district. I can tell you that. And I guess it's kind of silly because any coach would tell you that's a better way to start any time. But, oh, it's so hard to play catch up. In when this you place. look at the way the district's lining up this year, I mean, Port Natchez Groves has done some magnificent play as well. Yeah, still a young team, but uh, they're doing some things right over there. And Beaumont Central, of course, started out the year here on the Friday night experience beating Port Arthur Memorial. Right. Still trying to figure out that Port Arthur Memorial team. I think they've got potential, but they've lost some games they probably shouldn't have and won some. They, they're just hard to figure out. But in 24A, the Nederland Bulldogs, the favorite in this district. Central was picked second, Vider third, Beaumont Ozan picked fourth, and they'll round out their four playoff teams if that come true. Tanner Noel's kick taken at the goal line. This time Stevenson weaves forward, gets to the 23-yard line. Jeremy Stevenson, the preferred returner now. 
We will see Port Natchez Groves Indians next week when we go to watch their game against the Little Cypress Mauriceville Bears. It's Port Ar part of the Port Arthur News Friday night experience. Next opponent for the Nederland Bulldogs will be the Livingston Lions. Of course, Vider will be, at, be hosting uh, Ozan. First down and 10. Hand off to Halen Leckelk. The freshman gets about a yard going around right end. What a story of freshman being called up. I mean, this guy was playing Tuesday night football there for a while, Thursday night football with the freshman team not too long ago. Christian Contreras of the Bulldogs in on that stop is he and Leckhout kind of slid into each other at second base there. Second down, a long nine to go. Ball on the ground. Simmons, I believe, is able to pick it up. Yeah, it doesn't fall on it. He tried he scooping it up. That could have been dangerous, but he does recover. Get Simmons, the quarterback for the Vider Pirates. The Pirates will be facing this exchange between he and Jeremy Stevenson. But the fumble is recovered by Vider. Loss of about a yard and a half, so it's going to be third down and just more than 10. Vider needs to get to their own 33-yard line for the first down. Simmons under immediate pressure, and he's going to be sacked. One-yard loss. Looked like they were trying to set up a pass play in the pocket, never formed. There it is, brought down by Leon Mayfield. The linebacker's doing a great job. Fourth down for the Pirates. About the third or fourth time we've called out his name here in the first half, and looks like Vider's going to have to punt again. After losing two yards on that sequence. Marcus Moore, the punter. Good high kick, hits at the 50. Bulldogs get away from it, and the forward roll takes it to the 42-yard line. line. 3-12 left in the first half. Needle in 14, Vider 3. We would like to acknowledge the sponsors of the Needle and ISD scoreboard. Natchez Federal Credit Union, Five Point Credit Union, JK Chevrolet, Gulf Credit Union, the William Dornboss family, Classic of Southeast Texas, Christus Texas Hospital, and DuPont Goodrich. And you'll also notice at the base of the scoreboard there, there's a car from Philpot Ford Philpot Ford and NISD are partners in education. Philpot Motors gives away a car every year for an attendance incentive. That's something that the kids at Needle and High School really get fired up about. Preston White has got a guy wide open. Say, say, just off of his fingers. There's a flag on the play. And Preston White is getting up very gimpily. Just off the fingers of Say on a play that easily could have been a touchdown. Hand off to Hopkins, then back to Preston White. But there's a flag back where White threw the ball from. White's limping a little bit on his left leg. Referees are meeting at the line of scrimmage to talk about the, the call. But that was a perfectly set up play that very easily could have become a touchdown. Yeah, a little underthrown, and he's running one way and trying to reach back the other. Okay, personal foul? I think that's what he's saying is that the, uh, the pass interference was against the offense. The personal foul was against the defense. So the referees are going to get it all together here. Pass interference against the Bulldogs and personal foul against the Pirates. I believe they've got it all arranged there with the two fouls offset, yeah. and we replay first down over. I didn't see any of the personal fouls. 
I believe they may have hit the passer a little bit late, but the offensive pass interference I did not see either. So hope the fans at home had a better shot than we did. But guess what? It doesn't count in the book. First down and 10. Pitch to Hopkins. He has room over the left side. A lot of room. Hopkins gets the first down on a 13-yard carry to the 45-yard line Alvis. of the Pirates. Austin Alvis with the tackle. 13 on the play. Good for a Bulldog first That's down. That's the most room Hopkins has had early. I mean, there was a wide open field over there from the hash mark over. Alvis coming up from his defensive position. Bulldogs still have all three of their timeouts. Vider has two. I formation for Needleman. Fakes the handoff. Pass to Barton in the flat. He gets to the 36-yard line. It'll be just tackle short of the first down. Sage Smith. Sage Smith once again on the tackle. You know, a lot of them tonight. Referees are calling an official's timeout as it's close There's enough to measure. Timeout. You can see Barton just goes right past that defensive end and goes into the pattern. We will have a measurement. Good sure tackle there by the senior, Sage Smith. Shot of Jeff Matthews, like you said, uh, in his 15th year, but uh, never won at Bulldog Stadium. And that is surprising. You know, you would, you would think after all those years that he would be able to sneak one in. Last year was a... A classic game. Both teams came into the opening game of, uh, of district loaded up. It's going to be just short there. It'll be second down and one. 20 to 13 was the just final. Short, it'll bring up a second down and one. As Needham was able to escape from Pirate Stadium with that victory. He's just done an amazing job over in Vider. The fans love him. And, uh, you know, you remember some of those bad years in Vider back in the late 70s, early 80s. I mean, they had they were leading the state with the most losses in a row. The joke was Interstate 10, Vider 0. Vider 0. <laughs> and then they turned it around, you know, especially under Coach Matthews' uh, tenure. Definitely a winning attitude at Vider High School. They know they can compete with anybody in the state of Texas. They just play this hard-nosed football lineup and run it down your throat. Sage Say is wide open. Uh, fans looking for it. I think everyone looks for the flag on that one. Two referees looking at it, and it is an incomplete pass. I mean, one of the rules is you've got to be looking back at the football. You'll watch the way he just jumps up and kind of tries to block it. <laughs> May have gotten away with one there. May have. Third down and short, though, you got to admire Needleland's Brian Spell, offensive coordinator, taking a shot downfield. He's done that several times mm -hmm. in this game, uh, calling the flea flicker from his own end zone earlier. Hopkins goes to a wing back. Barton is the only setback now. Flag on the play, and it's Barton's up matter. the middle. Barton trying to outrun, dives, touchdown, Needleland. I think they're going to the decline this one. Yep. Unless an offensive lineman twitched. I didn't see it. I saw a Vider Pirate come across. Yeah. Offsides against the defense refused. Marcus Martin gets his 35 yard touchdown. Needlin adds to their lead 20 to 3. Here the fans getting it going there, the Needle and Bulldog chant. Tanner Noel ready for the point after. A little bit of a low snap. Still works it through to make it 21 to three. And the Bulldogs with an 18 point lead. Our new score, the Needle and Bulldogs 21, the Vider Pirates. Both three. these teams came into this district game two and one. Vider had done an excellent job playing against Friendswood Clearbrook last week, a 5A team. Yeah, they lost 33-29.
Some people thought uh, they were leading late in that game, and, you know, so be it. Some fans think there were some calls made the wrong way, but Riders' other wins came against Bridge City, that 54-13 win over their Orange County rivals, and then 28-19 uh, over Santa Fe to open the season. Santa Fe, a 4A school. But those are what get you prepared for this. District play, it's the opener tonight between Vider and Nederland. You know, we talked about it. We were a little worried. I didn't think Nederland were all they were hyped up to be when they lost to Crosby, 56-35. But they bounced right back with that 23-7 win over Goose, Goose Creek Memorial. And then the impressive one, one was the 35-21 win over Angleton. We saw that one two weeks ago here on the Friday night experience. A, a Definitely a game that Angleton could have won if it turned literally on that. Uh, uh, it was a, a, a lateral, one of those wide laterals. Angleton thought it was a screen pass, didn't even try for it, and Sage Say alertly picked up the ball and started running in the other direction. And that ended up being the difference in the points. You got to know where the ball is. Got to play the game. Tanner Noel's kickoff. Curving, taken again at the goal line by Stevenson. Stevenson is stood up <laughs> by Brandon Dial, number 27, and driven backwards again at the 20-yard line. Ryder has a minute 52 seconds left in the first half to try and get some points on the board. They scored first on a 21-yard field goal after Kendrick Hopkins fumbled on the Byers first play of the Bulldog possession. Those have been the only points that, well, was a hard hit. That was a hard hit. Nice job there by Brandon Dial. Now, if they run three straight plays and don't get a first down, Nederland's going to be right back in it. Sage Sage tripped up right at the, excuse me, Sage Smith, the other Sage. Ball carrier. And actually Smith. with Stevenson. I've got my numbers totally mixed up, James. Yeah, Nederland's going to start using. You know, thinking about using these timeouts now. Looks like they may have taken one. They did. Stevenson gains one yard up the middle, tripped up at the line by Caleb Malvo. And that timeout's taken by Needle in here. Bulldogs taking 140 timeout. left. That's the first timeout that Needle has taken on the board. Leaves them with two. Yeah, they're thinking no yardage there. Pick up two more of those, get the football back. IBEW, local 479, is celebrating their 100th year of the formation of the local. This group was chartered in Beaumont, Texas to serve the thriving communities of Southeast Texas as they oiled the world. And every week they bring us a trivia question, which is uh, researched by Ace, Ace researcher Tori Manning. And this one is a little bit different. It deals with one of the histories of Biter. Country music stars Tracy Bird and Clay Walker both graduated from Biter High School in the 1980s. So, James and fans, in what year did both Bird and Walker have their first number one hit? There are your options. Think about it. We'll get back to the answer after this next play. 1989, 1991, Second 93, down and, nine for and 94. Now think back, where were you, James, during those years? I was in years? college. Graduated Lamar oh, in 94. You young whippersnapper. Sage Smith breaks free, gets into the secondary, and gets a first down to the 40-yard line. You know, we were listening to Clay Walker at the Neon Armadillo back in college. <laughs> he, he had not hit it big just yet, but uh, – the neon Armadillo, what, what a name. The old Neon Armadillo, it's an apartment complex now. You remember it was the old keg originally. Yes, I do. And that's a generation before. Looks like another timeout is being called. And this one goes, a timeout is called timeout by Neyland, so after that first down play. So, fans, you, you've had a chance to think about it now, the IBEW Local 479 trivia question. James, you have four options there. What do you choose? Well, I, I do know now it was 93, but I had gone originally with 94. Originally, okay, so there it is. But You're it's right. it's 93. Bert, it's holding heaven. I do remember that. And then what's it to you by Clay Walker just a, a month later? That's correct. I tell you, and it, it must, uh, you know, of course, uh, George Jones also graduated from Vider High School. Many 
famous musicians came from Southeast Texas. I, one of the sponsors of the Friday uh, Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience, the, uh, uh, the the museum down there, Museum of the Gulf Coast, has got a very extensive display of all the musicians that came from this area, starting with Janis Joplin through the Big Bopper. Yeah. Do you remember Jeff Schultz, who was a sportscaster here? Yes. He was roommates with Clay Walker Whoa. back in the day. Yeah. Small world. Small world. First down and 10 for Biter. And those defensive linemen Not are doing a great speed. job of finding the ball because there are running backs going everywhere from this Biter slot T offense. Stopped by a host of Bulldogs. And off to Smith there in the two. middle, and you can see three defensive linemen led by Caleb Malvo and Deshaun Washington. That's 600 pounds of college-bound defensive tackle. No gain, second down. Smith again. That looks like the play he broke for 15 Smith yards on the earlier. Carrier. Number one, Malvo. Gain of four. Number one, Mayfield on the tackle. It's going to be third down and a long six to go. A couple of those linemen are either getting off that ball right on time or but you're just seeing them surge across. Are facing a third down and seven. I know there is a rhythm to the offensive quarterback's uh, cadence, you know, his snap. And if he sings it the same way every time, you can anticipate the movement of the ball. Here's a good shot. Let's see how good they are. Oh, looks like they're going to get a needle. Yep, defensive linemen move first. There is a flag he jumped over, and that'll be a free five yards to Viter. We're down to 17 seconds right now. Referees get it all lined up. Again, we acknowledge the Dead and thank the referees for their dedication to the sport. Their primary function here is to maintain the health and safety of the athletes. That's why all these rules are enforced as conscientiously as possible. You could not play the game without them. Third down and one to go. The clock is running, though. We may not even get this play off before the half is over. And we don't. Referees say the clock is over. That, that is the is end, the of, the end of the first half. Needle and Bulldogs 21, Ryder Pirates 3. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. At the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, our commitment to providing high-quality medical care includes offering the most modern technology available, a state-of-the-art emergency room, a dedicated heart center, surgical suites with the latest in digital technology, a 64-slice CT scanner, the first hospital with such a unit in Southeast Texas, and an obstetrics unit with neonatal intensive care for high-risk babies. It means maintaining a medical staff composed of skilled board-certified physicians in a number of medical specialties, backed by experienced nurses, medical technicians, and support staff. Together, we strive to make your experience as pleasant, convenient, and comfortable as possible with all private rooms, thoughtfully appointed birthing suites, and innovations in the ER to minimize your wait time. Voted Best Hospital for 2012 by the Port Arthur News Readers, and five-star rated by health grades in key procedures. At the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, we're dedicated to helping you get well, get healthy, and get your life back to normal as quickly as possible. For the second half of this opening game of 24A district play led by Needlin 21 to three over Viter. Charlie Jellin along with James Ware. And we've got some second half stats, or excuse me, first half stats, James. Well, I can give you second half stats so far if you'd like. <laughs> we can start with that. All the zero. <laughs> yeah, interesting stats from the Viter Pirates. Just 42 total yards. That's been the difference in the ball game. And then, of course, the one pass that they've thrown tonight gets intercepted, ends up turning into a touchdown for the Needlin Bulldogs a little later in that drive. Needleton Bulldogs, they're led by Hopkins, 11 carries, 48 yards. 
course, Marcus Barton, I should take that back. Uh, he has four carries, 101 yards in that touchdown. Fullback Barton has been taking advantage of the Pirates keying on Hopkins. Yeah, and Colton Kimmler has those three receptions, 45 yards and a touchdown. Preston White, quarterback for Nederland, seven completions, 10 attempts. He has an interception as well, but 118 yards and two touchdown passes. He's done a beautiful one. job placing that ball in the hands of his receivers in the end zone tonight. He has done that. He's come up with some really good touch passes. The uh, exchange of interceptions really didn't hurt him as uh, he gave up one, and then Neyland got it right back in their own end zone as Trey Richardson came back with one. The Biter started off the scoring with a 21-yard field goal from Tamayo to take the 3 nothing lead after Hopkins fumbled on the first offensive the play that Neyland had. And then Neyland put together three straight scores, White to say, 20-yard pass, then White to Kimbler, a 16-yard pass. Finally, Barton, Marcus Barton, the fullback, 35-yard run right up the middle to make it 21-3. Now we start the second half. Tanner Noel, number 17, the senior kicker, ready to kick it off. Both the kickers tonight good at placing it deep. Yes, they are. I mean, I hope they get uh, both of these guys get some uh, looks from the colleges because as the pros well know, if you get somebody can put it into the end zone, that works very much in your favor. Of course, as soon as we say that, we get a short kick. Hard run there by the freshman, Halen Leckelk. Leckelk on the carry. Gets it out Back to the 27 yard true. line. Like hell, can kind of bobbled it a little bit there, the but of the project you can see that freshman. He's not afraid to put his head into the pile and push it forward. I don't know what uh, Viter's all-time leading rusher Viter's is, but get yardage, the kind of yardage he's getting this early as a yards. freshman, he's going to have some stats by his senior year. So Viter seeking to make a quick answer here. Down by 19 points. Pitch goes to Sage Smith. Smith is still running into the secondary. Does a great job oh, wow. of keeping his feet. Tackled at the 49. Gain of about uh, 27 yards. Make it 22, my mistake. Sage Smith, both offense and defensive starter for the Viter Pirates. You see they're just pushing off Kimbler. Good balance there, got an extra five yards. Hand off this time to Alex Butte, number 22, comes around left end. Butte on the carry. Gets it to the Bulldog 46 yard line, five yard gain. Game Second five down. On the play. Second and five for the Pirates. The offensive line's coming out firing here. That's the key to that slot T. Any type of misdirection in the backfield, and that gives that lineman a chance to establish the block, and then the running back cuts off of it. Yeah. And off to Lekelk. Still running. He gets the first down to the 35-yard line. Yeah, and that slot T formation, you'll see a lot of movement, a lot of uh, misdirection. Uh, just watch all the movement throughout these plays, and. Uh, You'll see what we're talking about, but he can throw alpha defense. He threw uh, he threw his lineman, Nathan Gidry, into that block, said, okay, you go there, and I'll cut off of you. So Viter got out there uh, making some adjustments at halftime, apparently, and moving the football pretty well here to start the second half. Hand off up the middle that time, and Smith One, did two, not three, find four, anything. Five, six Bulldogs. Carrier Smith. Sage Smith stopped at the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him a yard forward progress, but it's a hard yard. You can watch it here on the replay. Right there. Smith doing an excellent job holding on to that ball. Tackled from behind is Leck Help. A loss of about three for the Viter Pirates. Tackled by number five, Caleb Malvo. 
That's tough when a defensive tackle catches you from behind. Big Caleb Malvo, number five, watch him come right past the center here. And the big 296-pound two-year letterman tackled the freshman for a three-yard loss. Third down, 12. Yeah, and then you got big Deshaun Washington piling on as well. Two big monsters tackling a freshman. There. That's a tough pile. Handoff this time to Butte. He's coming around the left end. Butte, the ball carrier, run out of bounds. By Gets to the 27 yard line. Be about two yards short, fourth down. Fourth down and three for the Pirates. Good ground field shot here. You can see Butte setting up the blocks. Fourth down territory to go for it. District play, no need to hold back. The Kelk dives Gonna forward across the 25. Where did the knee hit? Got it. I'll carry Leckle. Yeah, if he crossed the Good for Let's see, if he crossed the 25, I think they're going to give it to him. Good block there on the defensive end to Sean Washington, rather defensive tackle. McKelp went inside of the big defensive lineman, which is probably a good place to go. Vider with the opening kickoff here in the second half. Zach Massey with the ball, sweeping around the Massey right side. Had his legs taken out from under him. Tackle by number 20, Travis Gallier. Good play here by number 20, Travis Gallier coming up from his safety position. Second down and nine for the Pirates. Gain of only one for the Pirates. Stevenson brings the play into the huddle. Play clock's down to seven seconds. It's like Sage Say getting in on that tackle that uh, kind of came to an abrupt stop. Stevenson called his own number. You can see the running back coming here to the left and good form tackle right there. He got to the 30 for a four-yard gain. Third down Third and down six. Third down and six for the Pirates. Pirates showing, you know, basically this is four-down territory as far as they're concerned. Yeah, no field goals here. Pitch over to LeCalc. Dives over the defensive back. He's going to be short. Ball fourth down and one. Colton Kimmler holds him up from getting the first down, so it's going to be fourth and one. Good run here, though, by the freshman. Nice downfield block. Engage the cornerback. Fourth and one. Defensive stand coming up here for the meter and Bulldogs, fourth and one. A little bit of a mix up in the backfield, but it looks like he got it. A lot of confidence in this freshman, giving him the football in these tight situations. See the defense and everybody collapse, but the running back just follows the lead blocker. First down at the 13-yard line of the Bulldogs. If you were to take a guess, Vider doesn't list their weights on their charts, but uh, what would you say the freshman is? 190. He's running around right in now, looking for the corner. Has his legs taken out from him again by Kimbler, but he dives Kimbler forward for another tackle. two yards. Michael on the carry. McKell coming from the wing with a guard leading the way. Second guard takes out the cornerback and the safety has to come over. Gain of over five yards, second down and a short five to go. Still a chance to get 
first down without getting in the end zone. Quick handoff to Butte. He's looking for the corner. Touches the pylon. Touchdown. Touchdown, Pirates. Fighter Pirates. Alex Butte with the nine-yard run. This is what the Vider Pirates needed. They needed to come out in this second half and not let the Needleland Bulldogs score at all, but here they take their opening drive and go the distance uh, and put seven on the board. Six as of now, awaiting the extra point. Tamayo attempting the point after. High snap, very high snap. Good bring down by Get Simmons and Tamayo six puts in the, the point through. 10 to 21 is your score. Bulldogs will be getting the, the kickoff in team. just a moment. We'll be back in just a minute. Crazy idea. What if your bank actually paid you for using your debit card? Let's say 10 cents for every $10 or more debit card purchase. How amazing would that be? We call it Cash Back Counts Checking from Community Bank. A free debit card that pays you to use it. Even he's smiling at that. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. 70 yards, they started at about the 30. About, yeah, I want to say 27, 28. Well, we're back to live action here. 21 to 10, needling over Vider. Vider just took the opening kickoff of the second half and took it over 70 yards down Needleland's throat using the slot T to perfection. Charlie, oh. that comes after just 42 yards of offense, total offense in the first half, and they marched down 73 yards and score. Jeff Matthews told them something at the half. They've made some adjustments. That's the mark of a successful program such as Vider has had and also Needleland, those halftime adjustments that are made by the coaches. Yep. It's a game of chess. Yeah, and if you know Jeff Matthews, he's also a motivator, so he probably told him something at halftime to get him fired up back in this ball game. Tamayo's kickoff, a little short, taken at the 12-yard line by number 80. Again, Osmar Mendoza. Mendoza on the carry. Mendoza takes it across he's the 30 to the 32-yard line. line. Nealon will have the opportunity to meet that Vider challenge. 24A district play opening tonight. Several districts opening uh, their, their play this week. Preston White, two touchdown passes in the first half. Marcus Barton, one touchdown run in the first half. The two passes going to Kimbler and Say. Needlin in the I formation. Hopkins. Pushes forward to the 36-yard line. Hopkins gain of three carrier. yards. Tailback Hopkins has not really had the territory to work with he has in the previous three games. Fullback trying to load on the defensive end there, but Viders linebackers ably filling those gaps. Needlin still in the eye. Pass thrown to Pass Sage Say, number 10. Gets to the 46 yard line. That's another Bulldog first down. Just a quick little, not, you can't really call that a slant pattern, kind of a back shoulder throw which has become so popular in the NFL and in the college ranks. It's very hard for a defend defender to yep. even know the ball was coming. And working here at Niederland tonight. Offset eye formation now. Barton moves slightly to his left. Trap play up the middle. Hopkins has room. Hopkins Gets to the 45-yard line. Eight yards on first down. A gain of eight yards. There's an injured player on the field for the Pirates, and we have an official's timeout. See the play here from ground level. May have been right there on the tackle, the injured Pirate. 
We'll take an injury timeout here, and we'll be back in just a moment. 21 to 3 the score, Bulldogs over the Pirates. The Museum of the Gulf Coast, where our area collection of the Jurassic period meets Janis Joplin with 60 plus Music Hall of Fame musicians, head coach Jimmy Johnson. Bum and Wade Phillips with 60 plus sports legends and more than 35 notable people. Discover the arrival of early man to our area and the Civil War in the Gulf Coast region. Learn the stories behind this and so much more open seven days a week. Museum of the Gulf Coast, a museum like no other. What's unique is the people who purchase them. And when picking one, every detail counts, right down to the stitching on the seats. So why should picking a car loan be any different? Whether it's a low rate or a low payment you're looking for, at Do Good we customize loans to fit your needs. And we'll make sure your lending experience is everything you want it to be. Easy, convenient, and hassle-free. At Do Good, you'll love your car loan as much as you love your car. And that's just one more way they do good. Today, Dad. Thanks, son. For more than 15 years, I've helped clients nationwide make solid decisions about investing in gold so they can enjoy what's most important. Discover the best options for you and your family by calling 866-UCB-GUIDE to receive our award-winning gold guide free. 866-UCB-GUIDE, 866-822-4843. Now is the time to learn about gold so you have time to enjoy what's most important. We're back from an injury timeout. Blake Myers, you see there, number 50 going to the sideline for the Nederland Bulldogs. Going to get checked out. He was shaken up on that last play. After an eight-yard gain by the Nederland Bulldogs, that brings up a second and two, Charlie. Pro formation now. Hopkins to the left behind quarterback Preston White. Marcus Barton to the right. Hand off to Hopkins. He has the first down going past the inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Looks like Michael the Bulldogs are going to play a little bit of power football road. themselves. The two best offenses in 24A meeting head on here tonight. Both expected to be playoff contenders in District 24A. England again picked as the favorite by the Dave Campbell Texas Football Magazine. Fighter pick number three. High formation now behind White. Takes the handoff, White's under immediate pressure. The pocket has collapsed and Pirates are all over him. Pick up their first sack of the night. Four yard loss for the Bulldogs. Preston White, is White never had an opportunity to set up as he gets immediate pressure from Steven Nazemski coming in from his rover. Some teams call that the strong safety. They just roll Second him up and let him play him close to the line of scrimmage. He's basically a linebacker who can cover passes, has the ability to drop back if necessary. They get called all sorts of names, Bandit, Rover, Stinger. Twin formation now. Here come those linebackers. White rolls over. All just off of Barton's fingers, White didn't get his feet set before he let it go. He was getting some pressure from those two linebackers coming in. Rolling to his left, throwing back across his body. You can see White sees Barton wide open, wants to get it to him quickly. Just put a little bit extra juice on there. He was wide open. Third down. 13 to go for the Bulldogs from the 42 yard line of the Pirates. Pirates cut the lead down to 21 to 10 with the opening kickoff of the second half. Screen pass is set up and Say doesn't have a chance. Sage Say tackled very quickly 10, Sage, Say. by number Run 41, by Bradley, number Hartman, Bradley Hartman, who's the nose guard. You can watch him here on the replay. He's gonna sniff it out. It's gonna bounce over. Tackle say down from behind. You're facing fourth and 13. The Vider Pirates sending a lot more pass rushers on this uh, series here. Needland comes out in an offensive formation, but it's basically a shotgun. And in the past, White has quick kicked out of this, aiming to kill it inside the 10 yard line. 
and he'll make it to the 13. First down and 10 for Vider there as Needlin is forced to punt. All right, we saw what the Vider Pirates did with their opening drive. Let's see if they can do it again, and they'll be right back in this ball game. 21-10, Vider trailing the Nederland Bulldogs. The corporate sponsors of the Port Arthur News Friday night experience are DuPont Goodrich Federal Credit Union, Lamar University in Port Arthur, excuse me, Lamar University in Beaumont, Lamar State College, Port Arthur, the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, Museum of the Gulf Coast, Community Bank of Texas, Market Basket, Motiva Enterprises, Five Point Credit Union, Robert Giblin, and Mike Fulgence at Universal Coin and Bullion. As again, Ryder sweeps around the right hand side, this time Sage Smith takes the ball and gets the first down. Getting out to the 23 yard line, 11 yards on first down. Again, we'd like to thank those corporate sponsors of the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience. Well into their second decade of bringing the best high school football of Southeast Texas to you and your home. Smith again. Ball uh -oh. comes loose. Several pirates there, and there's also a flag on the play. Smith had the ball go away from him. Ball is recovered by Needlin at the 40-yard line. We've got a flag and we've got a fumble. There's a flag on the play. Personal foul, chop block is called oh. against the offense. Personal foul, chop block against the Pirates. I thought the referee was pointing Needlin's way on the recovery, but the Needlin defense is not responding that way. So apparently the, my call was an error. The ball must have been recovered by Viter. Personal foul chop block is gonna be called against the offense. So that goes back to the original spot. And backs him up a little more. My mistake again, a spot foul from wherever it occurred. So the referees are, have much sharper eyes than I. So we end up with a first down. Looks to be about 13 yards from the 20 yard line. Motion across the formation. Pitch to Smith. Gets away from one in the backfield and is tackled at the 20 yard line. So he tried to cut back, but the Bulldog pursuit was all like over it. All of our football sponsors this year, a silver screen. Action overhead doors, at your service plumbing. Crossroads Loss function. of two yards, second Robert down insurance. now. Michael Weaver agent, Floral Creations, Floors and Gifts, Kishnick Industries. It's gang Motive. tackling, and that's the way Miller you have Electric to do it, because it's hard to tell who's got the ball. Union, the lube shop, and Kent on demand. Caleb Malvo Please in the backfield there made say the bounce a little bit wider than he was expecting. This time the handoff to Lick Elk. Going around the right end, gets back to the 25 yard line. Five yard gain brings up a third down. Looks to be about eight to go. Sean Washington chasing the freshman down. Third down and eight. Travis Gallier also in on the stop. Charlie, you said Coach Jeff Matthews never won at Nederland. Do you know how many meetings they've had? He's been yeah, around 15, 15 years. 15 years, so uh, half of the yeah, meetings half roughly of those. here. That's the end of the quarter, 21 to 10 to score. That's we'll take a break and be quarter. back Our with the fourth the quarter of this district opener in just a moment. Team. At the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, our commitment to providing high-quality medical care includes offering the most modern technology available, a state-of-the-art emergency room, a dedicated heart center, surgical suites with the latest in digital technology, 
a 64 slice CT scanner, the first hospital with such a unit in Southeast Texas, and an obstetrics unit with neonatal intensive care for high risk babies. It means maintaining a medical staff composed of skilled board certified physicians in a number of medical specialties, backed by experienced nurses, medical technicians, and support staff. Together, we strive to make your experience as pleasant, convenient, and comfortable as possible with all private rooms, thoughtfully appointed birthing suites, and innovations in the ER to minimize your wait time. Voted Best Hospital for 2012 by the Port Arthur News Readers and five-star rated by health grades in key procedures. At the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, we're dedicated to helping you get well, get healthy, and get your life back to normal as quickly as possible. Start of the fourth quarter now. Vider facing a third down and eight to go. I tell you what, Caleb Malvo must have read the playbook. Sage Smith never had a chance to even get the ball and move forward. Malvo, number five, comes straight through the pulling guard. And he almost got the handoff from fourth quarterback Simmons. Fourth down, nine to go in. That's a little too far for Jeff Matthews to roll the dice this time. Marcus Moore, the punter. Colton Kimler set to return the punt at midfield. Kimler takes it at his own 44. Steps out of the first tackle. Second one gets him. On the return. Two yards Back on the return. Five, you know, the Vider Pirates, without their offensive coordinator from years, he came over to Vider with Jeff Matthews, was Dwayne Dubois. He's now the head football coach in Harden. Well, Jeff decided to go the head coaching route. Yards. But uh, long-time buddies. In fact, Jeff Matthews, with his bye week last week, went out to East Chambers and saw Harden Jeff in East Chambers game, just supporting his old buddy out there. Neyland with a first down and 10. 11-10 left in the game. Preston White under center. Fakes the handoff and gives it to Brandon Dial on a tight end reverse. Dial gets the first down and breaks away from one tackler. He's going to score. Brandon Dial on a 54-yard rump on the end around. That is surprising, a fine call. By Needland's offensive coordinator, Brandon Dial, showing a, quite a bit of speed for a senior. Not that all seniors are slow. <laughs> you could take that two ways. Dial does a great job stepping away from the Pirates, trying to catch him. Good for Needland, not good for the Vider Pirates, though. They were wanting to get back in this ball game. They're right back to the same spread they had at halftime now. 28-10, the Lincoln Bulldogs now lead. Our new score the Bulldogs, 28, the Vider Pirates, 10. We'll take a break and be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Lamar University is the contact that you have with the professors here. They're always willing to help with anything that you need. Living in Cardinal Village, I've made great friends. We've been able to study together and have fun all at the same time. The diversity at Lamar University really surprised me. I made so many different friends from all over the world. When I graduate from Lamar University, I know I'll be prepared for my chemical engineering career. Our engineering program is one of the best in the state. Texas Roots, infinite possibilities. What's unique is the people who purchase them. And when picking one, every detail counts right down to the stitching on the seats. So why should picking a car loan be any different? Whether it's a low rate or a low payment you're looking for, at Do Good we customize loans to fit your needs. And we'll make sure your lending experience is everything you want it to be. Easy, convenient, and hassle-free. At Do Good, you'll love your car loan as much as you love your car. And that's just one more way they do good. Tanner Noel, four for four on points after. 28 to 10, the score. Brandon Dial, the senior on the tight end reverse, scoring from 54 yards out. Now Noel's kick, good and deep. 
Yard deep in the end zone. Stevenson again follows his blockers, gets to the 20 yard line. The Friday night experience can be viewed anytime on the KFDM Channel 6 website at kfdm.com. Just click on the sports tab and then Friday night experience page presented by JK Chevrolet at the airport and Fultz Chiropractic, Jared's Paint and Body, Larry's French Market, Ritter Lumber, Sports Connection, and the Texas Coastal Community Credit Union. All of these fine sponsors supporting high school football in Southeast Texas. James Ware, I ought to let you get, you read that one. That's your, that's your guys. <laughs> KFDM, they've got all those games that we've been running on there. Some fine running there by the Pirates gets it across the 25 yard line. Again, the freshman, Halen Lickhelk. You can see number three coming around the end here. Quarterback taken down quickly by Malvo, but he doesn't have the ball. At slot T formation, you have to tackle everyone. Five yard gain, second down. This time Sage Smith kept the ball and he's knocked him sideways, no gain on the play. Fullback number 31 ends up with it. You can see him trying to follow the trap block, but Deshaun Washington was in the hole. Stewart on the tackle again. Smith had to try and bounce it outside, and the cavalry showed up for the Bulldogs. A lot of gold helmets on the football that time. Quick handoff to Alex Butte again sniffed out by the Bulldogs. That defensive line is Really clicking right now. Five yard loss back to the 20. Make it a six yard loss. That's a timing handoff because once uh, Butte started in motion, as soon as Simmons saw him get close, he snapped the ball and just handed it to him. Almost acting like a spinner back in the old days of the wing tee. It just seems strange for a quarterback in the NFL or college to have his back to the defense trying to hand the ball off. Another punt called for by Viter. Yeah, Colton Kimler back deep for the Bulldogs to receive the punt. This is about his own 46-yard line. Nice high punt. Goes out of bounds over at the Viter bench. Let's see where it's marked. Still going right at, still going, look at that. They've got it lined up there. <laughs> Here, right at the 50, let's just put it at the 50, James. It looks like it will be right at midfield. Needland ISD has a big, beautiful scoreboard on the south end of the stadium. And they're very proud of their sponsors for coming and making this possible. Needland Federal Credit Union Wishes the Needland Bulldogs best of luck this season. Five Point Credit Union. They invite you to come get a loan at Five Point anytime during the fall. You could possibly get your loan paid off. JK Chevrolet and Subaru, your hometown dealer, proud supporter of the Needland Bulldogs. Gulf Credit Union, they're really on your team. William Dornboss family, classic of Southeast Texas, classic car dealer. Christus Texas Hospital and DuPont Goodrich Credit Union as well. Fine run there by the Bulldogs, Marcus Barton, adding to his total, getting down to the 30 yard line. Tackled by number 22, Alex Butte. Gain of about 20 on that play. Barton's really been the workhorse here, you know, again with the Pirates focusing on Kendrick Hopkins. A little fullback doing a great job of taking advantage of the holes that are made available. Barton is the runner in waiting. He's a junior. 5'7", 165 pounds. He did get a letter last year. Hopkins puts his head down, pushes across the 30 to the 29-yard line. By number seven, Blake Rowe. Four-yard gain. Brings up a second down and six. Barton leading the way, trying to get his hat on the linebacker. 
as Hopkins came closer. Bringing the play from the sidelines is Colton Broussard, number 15. Pro formation now behind White. Hand off to Hopkins. He's got some running room. Gets the first down to the 20-yard line. So Nederland trying to put this thing away, huh, Charlie? One more score here, and uh, that's going to increase that lead. Tackle made by the Pirates, Alex Butte from his safety position. We're looking at 7.15 left in the fourth quarter. All the Bulldogs are, need to do right now is just keep the sticks moving. Ball's ball. on the ground. There is a fumble on the play. Looks like Preston White's going to recover there it himself. Flags coming in from both sides. Referee saw something. Charlie, Off I'm going to go down and do my uh, live TV stuff. I'm going to leave you here in the booth. I hate to do that to you, but I'm going to go do my live shots for the TV station, and uh, I'll try to rush back up here as soon as I get done. I appreciate that, James. Thank you. Hey, it's been a great game, 28 to 10. One thing about the Port Arthur News Friday night experience, we've had exciting games all week, all season long, and we're on, we're not even halfway through yet. <laughs> a lot of things going on. High formation now for Needleland. First down and five to go after the penalty. Pitch to Hopkins. He's got the corner outside there trying to get to the end zone. He steps out of bounds. Looks to be about the six-yard line. Ball carrier Hopkins, Hopkins continues bounds, running over Smith. to the track area. Not quite that season right now. First and goal for the Bulldogs. First down and goal from just inside the five yard line. Hopkins the lone setback. He gets the ball and will go into the end zone. There's a flag on the play though. Thrown into the center of the offensive line. There is a flag on the play. Offensive holding is called, holding so the no points on the board. Ten-yard penalty will take them back to the 14-yard line. You might be able to see it there on the replay, a, kind of a tackle on the inside of the line. Large hole there for Hopkins, but it was obtained illegally. They had to give it back. Preston White, the quarterback, came to the sideline to get the play. Takes it back to the huddle. Pro formation now. White pitches to Hopkins. Hopkins steps into the second line. There's another flag thrown as Hopkins gets to the five-yard line. Hopkins the ball carrier, there is another flag. But another flag on the play. Holding again called against the offense. Holding against the Bulldogs. Referees are trying to figure out where to mark it from. Flag is thrown at about the 13 yard line. So the yardage will be marked from there. That's where the hold occurred. Marked off from the 12, so they take it back to the 22. It is first and goal for Needleland. And I believe at this point they're going to go ahead and call a timeout to make sure everybody's rested and they stop holding. We're going to take a break here. 6.13 left in the game. Needleland 28, Vider 10. Diversification is important, 
and means more than owning different stocks. Hi, I'm Mike Fulgens, President of Universal Coin and Bullion. I've been helping clients nationwide for 15 years diversify with gold. And I want to send you a free copy of our award-winning gold guide to help you choose the best gold options for you. Get the answers you need about gold. Call us today at 866-UCB-GUIDE. That's 866-822-4843. Back to live action here. First game of 24A district play. Needlin seeking to make it three years in a row without a loss in this district. Last year, they defeated Vider in Vider 20 to 13 to start their 7-0 run, which led into the regional finals where they lost to Georgetown. First down and goal for the Bulldogs. I formation now. Barton a little bit offset to the left-hand side. And there's the pitch to Hopkins. Hopkins gets past the cornerback. Tackled at the 11-yard line. 11 yards on first down right there at the camera. And you can see the pitch, nice lead there. Second Hopkins had to reach out for it, from stepped inside the cornerback, a good stiff arm put against Alex Butte. And here's the ground level shot. You're, you're the D-back, what do you do? Grab on, hold on. Second down and goal from the 11. Tackle was made inbound, so the clock continues to run. Barton in motion, Hopkins gets the ball. Hopkins Not fights there, inside Hopkins. the 10 to about the seven yard line. Barton comes over and loads on that defensive end. Hopkins just follows the lineman. Third and goal, Needland. Hopkins getting some tough yards here. Third and goal from the seven. Needland's field goal kicker, Tanner Noel, has got a very strong leg, well within his distance. White checks for the audible, none called. They go with the play. Pitch to Hopkins, he boots it. Ball is loose. Fumble on the play. Recovered by Needlin. Recovered by the Bulldogs. At the six yard line, it'll be fourth down. Hopkins was unable to catch up to it. His forward roll got him very close to the ball. He ended up with it. Recovered it in the field to play, so the clock continues to run. Tanner Noel is going to attempt. 14-yard field goal from the left hash. Good snap, great kick, and it is good. Three points more on the board for the Bulldogs. Makes it 31 to 10. 337 left in the game. Port Arthur News Friday night experience will be back in just a moment. My fortune, I earned it the old fashioned way with long hours and hard work. And now I'm debt free. You're debt free because Five Point paid off our loan. Precisely, my dear. Go mow the yard. Five Point is paying off three loans. Plus, you can get up to a 2% rate discount. Five Point Credit Union. Money for loans right here at home. Your chariot awaits. Thank you. Back to live action here, 31 to 10. As Tanner Noel just added three points with a 14-yard field goal. Again, the scoring summary, 
Ryder led off after recovering a Hopkins fumble. Well, let's go ahead and talk about next week's game. Little Cypress, Mauriceville Bears, 0-2 for the preseason, will be taking on Fort Natchez Groves Indians at the reservation, the famous reservation of Fort Natchez Groves ISD. Of course, at this point in time, we do not know what the district records are of those two teams, but both of them expected to be in strong contention here for the four playoff spots that District 24A has. Noel's kick, a very deep one. And this time, Stevenson will down it. First down and 10 for Viter. The ball will come out to the Viter. Scoring summary for the game, Viter started off with a 21-yard field goal from Tamayo after recovering a Kendrick Hopkins fumble on the first play offensively that the Bulldogs had. Then Needlin scored three touchdowns in a row in the first half. Passes from White to Say for 20 yards and White to Kimbler for 16 yards, followed up by a Marcus Barton 35-yard run to make it 21 to three at the half. Ryder first down and 10. Hand off to Sage Smith. He's gonna to get to the 30-yard line on a five-yard gain. Second down. By Leon Here in the second half, Viter tightened up the deficit. Nine-yard run by Butte. And Tamayo's and point after made it 21 to 10. Then after a couple of punts, Needlin breaks it open with two more touchdowns. Brandon Dial scoring on a tight end reverse from 54 yards out to make it 28 to 10. And just a moment ago, Tanner Noel with a 14-yard field goal, 31 to 10. Simmons rolls out to his left, hits his receiver in the hands. Marcus Moore Passes catches the ball. Looks like it'll be Marcus good enough Moore. for a lighter first down. Good for a pirate first down. Referees are marking it at the 36-yard line. Simmons showing a good arm, putting it right into the hands of his target. Clock resumes rolling. See, Moore had enough time to raise his hands up and tell his quarterback, here I am, throw it to me. Now Simmons rolls to his right. Taken down by Malvo, defensive tacker, tackle yeah, rather, Caleb tackle Malvo. Simmons pulled the ball down. He had a moment to throw there, but pulled it down facing some outside pressure. Did not realize that the defensive tackle was coming from inside. A 12-yard sack for Caleb Malvo on that play. Second down, 22 to go. Here's number five. Back to the slot T now for Viter. Simmons rolls out, looks to plant. Almost caught. Good play there made by the defense to knock it out of the hands of Marcus Moore on the crossing pattern. Simmons rolling to his right, had plenty of time to stop Brings and plant. Third down and yards Good coverage go. there, though, by the Bulldogs as three of them were around Marcus Moore. Third down now, 22 for Viter. We're right at two minutes left in the game. Port Arthur News Friday night experience. We appreciate you joining us. Sage Smith gets back 10 yeah, yards, make it 11 yards of that deficit. Smith on the carry for the Pirates. Breaking free of the tackle and that's Brings up a Tripped up just barely. Let's see where they the spotted his knee. Right at the 37, so it's going to be fourth down and 10 to go. Time Warner Cable Sports Channel sponsoring the Port Arthur News Friday night experience this year. Meaning you can see this digitally all over southeast Texas. Simmons plants it. About five people had a chance to catch that ball. Two of them wearing white jerseys, three of them wearing black on that fourth down play. Off the hands of Joey Kosselman. 
number 81 looked like he was the closest pirate to it. The Bulldogs take over first down. Bulldogs hold, the ball goes over to them, first and 10 from the Viter 36 yard line. One eleven left in the game now. So Needleland is going to open up district play, one and zero. As they go into their victory formation here, Colton Kimler, fourteen yards deep as Preston White takes the knee to start the clock. Needleland will be one and zero. Vider. 0-1 going into their game next week against Livingston. Next week, the Port Arthur News Friday Night Experience will be at the reservation in Port Natchez Groves to watch the Indians take on Little Cypress Mauriceville in another key 24A district matchup. And that's going to be the last play of the game as Preston White kneels down. Two touchdown passes for Preston White today. Led the charge as Needland wins by the score of 31 to 10 over Vider. Continuing their undefeated run through District 24A. On behalf of James Ware of KFDM Box 4 News, I'm Charlie Jellin for Sheffield Productions. We thank you for being with us and hope you're with us again next week. The Museum of the Gulf Coast where our area collection of the Jurassic period meets Janis Joplin with 60 plus Music Hall of Fame musicians, head coach Jimmy Johnson, Bum and Wade Phillips with 60 plus sports legends and more than 35 notable people. Discover the arrival of early man to our area and the Civil War in the Gulf Coast region. Learn the stories behind this and so much more open seven days a week. Museum of the Gulf Coast, a museum like no other.